Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog. Today I am working on a pair of grand staircase socks. The color work on these socks may look a little intimidating, but it's created with one of my favorite techniques, mosaic or slip stitch color work. I sometimes think of mosaic knitting as cheater color work because it can be used to create these very complicated looking motifs, but unlike fair isle knitting, you're only working with one color of yarn at a time. So if you can knit stripes, you can do mosaic knitting. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to decipher mosaic charts and make sure to stay tuned to the end because I also have a couple general tips about mosaic knitting. Let's get started. Mosaic patterns are usually presented as color charts. However, the same stitch pattern can be charted in a variety of ways. These three charts may look different, but they all accurately represent the design that I'm using for my sock. In the first chart, you can easily see that each round is going to be worked in a different color. Based on the stitch key, the knitter would know that every stitch in the chart would either be knit or slipped. Since all of the stitches in round one are white, you would know to work with the white yarn. The first five squares are empty, so the first five stitches would be knit. The next stitch would be slipped purlwise, then a knit and slipped purlwise, and then knit five stitches and slip a stitch, and so on. Although this chart is fairly easy to follow, it's difficult to see what your finished knitting will look like from the chart, and that can easily lead to mistakes. Generally, I use charts like this for much more simplistic mosaic motifs. The next chart is a much better graphical representation of what the finished knit motif will look like, but it can be more confusing as to how the color work is created. This chart could accidentally be interpreted as a fair aisle pattern where you would be working across with both colors of yarn at the same time. You could easily think that you, for round one here, would knit five stitches in white and then knit one stitch in blue, knit one stitch in white, knit one stitch in blue, knit five stitches in white, knit one stitch in blue, and so on. But that's not the case. The clue that tells you it's a mosaic chart is the color block before the round or row number. That block means you should work the entire round or row in the color shown. And when you reach a square that's not in that row or round color, you know to slip the stitch purlwise and continue on. So for example, for round one, you would work the entire round in white, knit the first five stitches, and then since this square is not in white, you would slip the stitch, knit a stitch, and then again, since this square is not white, you would slip the stitch, knit five, slip a stitch, knit three, slip a stitch, and so on. For my grand staircase socks, I chose to make charts that combine the best of both of the previous styles. You can graphically see here what your knitting should look like. There's a block before the round number indicating which color you should be knitting with. And there are symbols to tell you when to slip a stitch and what color that slipped stitch is going to be. So I'll knit across part of round one so you can see how the chart relates to what you're knitting. Again, round one is in the white yarn because the block before it is white. The first five stitches are knit.
And then I know that I'm slipping a stitch and that stitch is a blue stitch that I'm slipping purl wise from left to right. Then knit a stitch in white. And then slip a stitch. And again, I know that it's a blue stitch that I am slipping. Knit across five stitches in white. And then slip a blue stitch. Knit three stitches. Slip a blue stitch. Knit five stitches. Slip a blue stitch, knit three stitches, and then slip a blue stitch. At the beginning, I promised a couple quick tips about mosaic knitting, so here we go. Tip number one. Whether you are working in rounds or rows with the right side or wrong side facing, in mosaic knitting, stitches are always slipped purlwise. This is important because it prevents the slipped stitches from being twisted in your fabric. Tip number two, blocking matters. Mosaic knitting can look bumpy and uneven as you work. The fabric will also likely be shorter than you are expecting. You can see here on the foot of my sock that right now the sole of the sock is about a half an inch longer than the instep of the sock. Knitters sometimes panic when they hear the word blocking because they think they need special mats and pins or blocking forms for items like socks to stretch their knitting into shape but it doesn't have to be that complicated. Often blocking can be as simple as wetting your knits and then laying them flat to dry. For projects like these socks that are primarily wool, I'll just give them a light spray of water from a bottle, then gently shape them to even out the fabric and just lay them flat to dry. Tip number three. Blocking will generally correct any tension irregularities caused by slipping stitches. But if not, you can use a knitting needle to make minor fixes. Let's zoom in and I'll show you what I mean. Right here, there should be a little white square, but you can see it looks like the blue stitch is covering it up. So all you need to do is take your knitting needle Dig in there just a little bit and even things out. I hope you enjoyed learning about mosaic knitting and how to decipher the color charts. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!